humility is all that I feel at this time. Don't you worry, don't you cry, I can promise it gets better in time. Keep your head up, keep your shine, hold my hand up, it gets better in time. Army, welcome back to my channel if you're a new babe hit the subscribe button because you're gonna want to stay if you're returning hey besties it's so good to see you again Whew. okay well happy tuesday okay today's tuesday i got off of work today i had a tutor a little bit after work today and now i'm about to go to the gym and when i tell you i don't want to go but it's time that i get back into the gym because i haven't been inside of the gym in the last couple of months. Any workout that I was doing was like in my apartment, grow with Joe, kind of just like chilling. You know, it's time. Rachel came today and it just feels very much like I'm heavy. I feel heavy uh, and I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. I also gained three pounds and I saw that on the scale this morning. Now it very well could be because Rachel came today. She surprised me. She came four days early. Thanks girl, thanks. But I didn't like that. Mm -mm. No, because my weight has been coming off pretty nicely these last couple of months and I really haven't been doing anything. Just eating when I can, like my body just doesn't react to food the way that it used to and the doctors keep telling me it's because I'm about to be 30. It's crazy that I have to pay a $50 copay just for y'all to tell me my age. Correction, my almost age. But yeah, they're just kind of like your body just doesn't tolerate certain things that you used to eat anymore and your body will definitely tell you. So that's really where a lot of my weight has come off at. Like I just haven't had much of like a, like a significant appetite. Although lately, I will say like this cycle around, like with Rachel and everything, I have really been eating whatever I wanted. If I want a brownie, I'm gonna eat a brownie. If I want a cookie, I'm gonna eat a cookie. And if I want some ice cream, I'm gonna eat a whole thing. Like it's just, that's just kind of what it's been. So that also could be just a little bit of the water weight that I got going on today. But I didn't like when I stepped on that scale and it was three pounds heavier, I said, mm. no. I also gotta get this last like 20 pounds off. Like that is just like my goal for myself. Like the, another 20 and I think I'll be like set to go. We're about to go to the gym. I'm doing light cardio. I'm gonna do 12, 3.30 today because I just, I already don't wanna go. But I also, I don't lift well when I'm on my cycle and today's day one and I'm like not feeling really good. Like I feel very fatigued and I'm also cramping really bad too. Like worse than usual on day one. So I just, I'm gonna take it easy today. So we're just gonna go to the gym. We got dressed for the gym. I'm wearing, my leggings, I actually had to get these leggings from Gymshark because I have like the gray ones. I had like three pairs of them and I had them in a large, but I had to reorder them and get them in a medium because a lot of my clothes, you know, stopped fitting the way that they used to, which is like great. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad, I'm not mad at it at all. But yeah, I finally got to upgrade to a size medium. I haven't worn a medium pant since I was probably like six. So there's that. But anyway, we're going to the gym and I'm trying to get myself hype. I have a new song. Then I'll put y'all onto, I'm gonna post it here on the screen so that you can see it because I don't have an actual playlist. All my playlists are on Apple Music and not Spotify. And everyone always asks me for music and I don't have actual playlists. So I guess I need to write that down of things to do to make a Spotify, a Spotify playlist so that you guys can actually listen to it. Cause I have, really have some bops, okay? I really have some bops, I have some jams, but this song right here, it came on my gospel radio on Apple Music today. And I literally have been playing it all day long. Like I've been all day long long okay i've been playing it and i've been blasting it so i think that the walk on the treadmill right now is about to be great because it's upbeat it's fun and i'm like oh yes i definitely got it anthony brown he's always always gonna come through with a bop like something that's like fast paced good for cardio and that's why i love his music because he will really hype you up okay he will really really hype you up so let's go ahead and get into this gym and then we'll be back <laughs> Should never be out of breath like this 25 minutes in like i whew, baby i am winded okay 
winded. This treadmill is humbling me. I'm so glad I only have five more minutes because I'm so sorry if I'm breathing loud. <laughs> this is just, whew. Okay, I got some definite work to do in this. minutes really almost did me in i know i need to get back into the gym but i know i was that bad y'all i even tried off camera and i'm so glad it was off camera i tried the stairmaster <sighs> humility is all that i feel at this time it probably looked like my workout was only like maybe 20 seconds to you, but baby, it was every bit of that 45 minutes. But I'm grateful. I feel accomplished. This is really, really good. I love that for me. Once I was done there, I hobbled my way back to this house because my legs were literally limp noodles. Took the slowest walk back to my apartment and then I made myself something to eat really quick, which is pot stickers because I love them. But then I was like, you know what? I'm getting a little bit on the tired side and I wanna do a Bible study tonight. So I gotta get up right now, but I wanted to open up this package with you guys because I peeped that it's my FabFitFun box, which leads us to today's sponsor, which is FabFitFun. Y'all know I love them, right? It's like a love, love. They love me, I love them. It's just, we go together real bad okay real bad honestly having a membership with fabfitfun has been such a game changer over this last year because they just have all of the greatest stuff i mean you've seen in my past vlogs when my fabfitfun box has come in and you see all the stuff in there that i get i literally use all of the products all of the time i kid you not anyone that knows me in real life knows how i love me some fabfitfun okay this is the summer 2024 box and but first, if you guys have never heard of FabFitFun, which, you know what? This is a judgment-free zone. But now that you know better, you're gonna do better, okay? Okay. FabFitFun is my favorite, and in my opinion, the best customizable lifestyle subscription where you get six products per season from the top brands across beauty, fitness, home, wellness, skincare, and so much more. Did I mention that it's customizable? Yeah, gone are the days when we sign up for memberships, when we sign up for these subscriptions and they tell us what they think we would like. FabFitFun did their thing and was like, no baby, you tell us what you like and we will provide. And they do, every single time. I don't even know what's in my box right now. <laughs> and I just know, I just know they delivered. So Basically how FabFitFun works is you get four customizable boxes per year, so one per season, with six full size, emphasis on full size, beauty, fashion, wellness, fitness, and home products that you get to choose. You get to choose. You can also access exclusive member only. Okay, so you gotta be a member. Member only flash sales and shop top brands up to 70% off like Prada, Free People, Fenty Beauty, Coach, you name it, it's probably there. What I really love most about FabFitFun is that you can make the membership what you want it to be. All FabFitFun members have the opportunity or the option to swap their seasonal box for shop credit to just go ahead and shop on the actual website. Let me go ahead and show you guys what I got because I'm also very excited to see what I got. And I'm also gonna include the actual retail value so you can see all the stuff that they sent me. Like, I know it's just like the bomb.com right now. I'm, I'm honestly so hyped right now. And if I wasn't so tired from the gym, I'd probably be jumping up and down. <laughs> I kid you not. Oh, I also forgot to mention that each box is valued at up to $350, okay? So remember, six full price, full price items from top brands and the box itself is valued up to $350. So I'm just gonna show you all the great stuff that I got. Let's just show you, let me just show you. Okay, the first item that I got and I'm so hype. I remember picking this. It's just like, I feel like I filled out the survey because you get to pick what you want from like each category. I don't know why, but like I always forget what I pick. And then when I see the box, I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely picked that. But I'm really excited about this. These are the Dr. Dennis Gross Advanced Retinol and Ferulic Overnight Texture Renewal Peels. I love Dr. Dennis Gross. I already used their ABH peels, I believe. And I 
those, okay? I love them. It's like a two-step system and I love it. But now I was like, okay, it's time to pretty much upgrade because Dr. Dennis Gross products work so well on my skin. And so I'm really excited to try this. I'm actually going to use this tonight. So um, stay tuned. You can use them for fine lines and wrinkles, imperfections and uneven tone and texture, which I definitely have. And it's the full pack, okay? There are eight treatments in here, so not a little sample. This Dr. Dennis Gross treatment retails at about $42. Okay, next up, this is the Ceratopical Cracked Heel Souffle. And you know what? It's perfect because we're getting ready to pull out the sandals, the little kitten heels, and you wanna make sure that your heels are together because it's about to get hot outside, so you know me, okay? I'm trying to invest in my foot care and I got this full-size product. I've actually never tried this before. I'm really excited to use it. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted on this because you know, we just gotta keep the feet together, you know? because my feet are going to be out, okay? They're definitely going to be out. This retails for $35.95. I got a passport wallet, and I'm sure you can guess why. <laughs> I need something to carry my passport in because I'm taking trips, okay? It's super duper cute. Let me take it out of the packaging so that you can see it. But it's this gorgeous tan beige color. Oh, yes. Look at all of the storage for cards, IDs. Oh, this is so great. Oh, I can see my passport right here. This is from the brand Lost and Wander and it retailed at $40. This next product is the Freck OG and I'm a person that always wanted to have freckles growing up. Like people who have freckles to me, I just feel like, how does it feel to be God's favorite? Because <laughs> I think freckles are so beautiful and I can never really get them right when I try to do them on my own. But this product right here is supposed to help you get very natural looking freckles. It comes in this very tiny container because you don't need a lot of it. It almost looks like a liquid eyeliner brush. This retails at $22 and you might be saying like for that small thing, Rihanna, no, 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 no. The product is going to last you a long time because a little bit goes a long way. Y'all about to see me with freckles. Okay. I got an anklet. This is from the brand Danijo, D-A-N-N-I-J-O. It is an ankle bracelet, anklet, anklet, is that what you call them? It's gold. This actually retails at $140, but it's really good quality. Right off the rip, you can, you know when you can tell, it's really great quality and it's actually double chained, which is actually cute. So it kind of gives the effect that there are two, but there's, it's connected, so it's just one. And it's so beautiful. Oh, this is like the summer starter pack kit. You need it. You need it. And then finally, I got this cream champion ball cap and I've always wanted one of these. And I actually was going to buy one until I saw it as one of the selections that I could pick for the subscription box. And I was like, oh, absolutely yes. And this retails for $25. Also as a member for your flash sale, the average member saves $500 in their first season. FabFitFun has two options for membership. For the seasonal membership, it's $69.99 per quarter. And then they have the annual membership, which is $219.99 per year which is about $55 per box. Just some extra sweeteners in case you're not already sold. You save an additional $60 per year by going the annual membership route and the average annual member saves $1,700 or more per year. So you do with that information what you will. Now, of course, you know, I have some codes for you guys because I would never partially put you on to anything. If you want to sign up for a seasonal member, use my code Rihanna in all capital letters for 20% off your first FabFitFun box. And if you want to go the annual route, you want to be an annual member, you can use my code Rihanna gift in all capital letters where you will receive a free gift valued up to $200 with a new annual membership. Both codes are up here on the screen. They will also be down below in the description box I will also have the direct links linked for each membership so if I just confused you I promise I didn't mean to that was not my intention but if I did just go ahead and scroll down to the description box because that's where I put all my information anyway and go there and hook yourself up with some fab fit fun goodies because I'm telling you they've got something for everyone and you're included fab fit fun you never disappoint okay like y'all are all right with me thank you so much again for sponsoring this portion of today's video well let's fast forward to the next morning I I got the worst sleep I've ever had last night. I'm just in like so much pain with this cycle. Like I haven't had a cycle this bad in a long time. So I'm just very uncomfortable, but I just took some medicine right now and I'm waiting for that to kick in. But I wanted to do a Bible study with you guys because I didn't get a chance to do it with you guys last night. I still read my Bible and my church had our Tuesday night teaching with Bishop. So I ended up doing that. I just watched it from home because I could not leave my house. Like. I could not get off the couch. I was in so much pain, but we got the heating pad going right now because I am hurting so bad. This is 
crazy. So I don't know if I was telling you guys, but I'm doing an in-depth study of the book of Exodus. It's so funny because I never thought that I would get to this point. I've shared that I've gone through my Job season and I feel like I'm on the cusp of coming out of that. But now it's me having to fully recognize and understand when it's my turn to take my leave, when I need to take my exit from something that has kept me in bondage, in slavery, has kept me captive in my mind and this is where i'm at in this part of the journey and i can really truly see that god is the god of process because i would have never just gotten here on my own without god allowing the things that have happened over the course of the last like year i wouldn't have gotten there on my own so i i could see this being like okay Cool. I'm walking out of it. I'm walking out of it, right? So if you're not familiar with the book of Exodus, I'm actually going to focus on chapter two today. But in chapter one, it talks about the sons of Israel. They came to Egypt. Joseph was already there because you know how his brothers did. Mm -hmm. But that's not what this is about. So the sons of Israel come over to Egypt. When that whole generation dies, God left the Israelites very strong, very great in number to the point where the Egyptian Pharaoh is basically threatened. He's like, they're too strong. We're outnumbered by them. They're too mighty and we need to oppress them and we need to enslave them. So Pharaoh is basically doing everything that he can to reduce the number of Israelites. And he goes as far as asking the Hebrew midwives to unalive all of the male babies, but allowing the daughters to live. And when they don't do that because they're Hebrew and they fear God, Pharaoh then goes ahead and he gives the order to his people, his Egyptian people to kill the sons by throwing them into the Nile by drowning. So that's where I'm at right now. And I just wanted to actually share the reason I do my in-depth studies. Yes, is to understand what the stories are, but I'm really seeking God's character and his characteristics. Because if I can understand his character and his characteristics, I can look for them in my situation. And that might be something that other people might need. And I'm just showing you how I do that. Just looking at my notes here, some things that I took down from that first chapter is is that God is strong. When he was talking to the midwives about killing the, the sons, the midwives said that Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous women and they usually deliver before we even get to them. And hearing that statement, I said that one of God's characteristics are that he is strong, that he strengthens us when we are hard laboring, whether you are physically in labor or you are like working. I also said that God is gracious because in return for the midwives not doing as what Pharaoh said, God established families and households for them. More so because they feared him with profound reverence, but God is gracious. And then finally, I said that God is intentional, okay? God is intentional because even after Joseph's generation dies off, the Israelites are still strong and mighty in number to the point where the king of Egypt feels threatened. So he knew what he was doing, even though that whole generation was gone, Israel had a fighting chance, okay? So now I'm just I'm not gonna read it because I don't have a lot of time. I have to get ready for work this morning. So I highly encourage you guys to read Exodus. But right now I'm focusing on chapter two and it talks about the birth of Moses. So again, remember I am really trying to study the text this time around to see God's character. So I have some notes here. So I'm gonna be looking down at my notes. Um, So basically it talks about the birth of Moses and how a woman from the family of Levi gave birth to a son and she just saw that he was beautiful. She just knew something about her son, like people would be drawn. So she hides him because remember the decree that came from Pharaoh was that all Hebrew sons were to be thrown in the Nile River to drown. She decides to hide her baby, trusting in God over Pharaoh's ridiculousness in this sense, okay? Even though he was in control at the time over the territory, she's still believing to trust in God. And when she could no longer hide him anymore, she put him in a basket and she sends him down the Nile, which is also so interesting because the same body of water which babies were being drowned in would serve as a means of deliverance for baby Moses. And it's just like, God is just really in every detail. So basically Pharaoh's daughter goes to the Nile to bathe and her and her maidservants are there. They see the basket. Y'all really already know the story, but if you don't, she sees the basket. She asks him to bring the basket to her and she opens it and she sees that there is a Hebrew baby in there and she feels sorry, she takes pity. Moses' sister was always watching to see what would happen, what would come of, you know, 
Moses. And so she offered to Pharaoh's daughter to find a wet nurse to nurse the baby for her. And Pharaoh's daughter agrees. So she goes and runs to Moses's mother to be the wet nurse. And basically Pharaoh's daughter was like, I will pay you wages. So it's so crazy because one moment the baby is under a threat of death. And then the next moment, his mother was being paid by Pharaoh's daughter to raise him. And this shows the sovereignty of God at work. And so that's one thing that I'm highlighting right here regarding God's character is that he is sovereign because no matter what Pharaoh thinks he's doing, no matter what he thinks is going on, God is going to do what God does. And he's going to make sure that his people are taken care of. I just feel like God really give special care when people are acting in accordance to his word to his will to his kingdom agenda like i just let me just keep going with my notes and then i'll and then we'll move forward moses grows older mom returns into pharaoh's daughter pharaoh's daughter named him moses and that is her son and now he's being raised in a royal household which is then even so crazy because the future prophet of god who would bring plagues to egypt who is going to deliver the israelites out of egypt is being nurtured and taught and guided right under the enemy oppressor's nose this is just so crazy like it's just it's always it ne it's never what it seems it's literally it's never what it seems so then we fast forward moses gets older and he starts to identify with the hebrews and he sees an egyptian being very harsh with a hebrew he ends up killing the egyptian and hiding him in the sand and then there's another interaction he sees two hebrews fighting each other and he's like you know why why are you guys fighting one of the men was like are you gonna kill us like how you killed that Egyptian and so now Moses knows that his crime is known and it's only a matter of time before Pharaoh finds out and he's now trying to have Moses killed so he escapes to Midian. He literally went from being like the step grandson of the Pharaoh to now being on the run, being on the lamb. It's like really crazy how fast your situation can change. But now here I am, I'm like oh my gosh just as fast as your situation can change for the negative it could change just as fast in the positive but we'll get there. What I love about this section of the text though too is that Moses, his intentions were good, but you can't go, you can't do the right things and go about it the wrong way. And if that is not me, instead of acting impulsively, which I can do at times as well, we need to get God's perspective on what's actually going on. And eventually in God's timing, we all get there, but I, I tend to want to rush the process. So I very much overstand what Moses is going through what he's feeling why he did what he did so he's in Midian and Moses comes to the defense of the daughters of a priest whose name is Jethro and he helps them water their flock and when the girls get back early you know Jethro's kind of like why are y'all back so early and so they explained to him that an Egyptian man came and they helped him so you know they were done early Jethro was like uh go back get that man bring him over here so he can have some dinner with us and basically one thing leads to another Jethro gives him his daughter Zipporah and they have a son who they named Gershom which I believe means stranger and then Moses becomes a shepherd in Midian which is so crazy because he went from literally being in the palace to now being a shepherd in the desert and how many of us find ourselves in a position where we are doing so great everything is going well whether it's like the job whether it's financially you know we're just doing so well and then all of a sudden our situation turns and it's like hold up lord what's going on here? Why did you demote me? Why did you bring me down? And realistically, instead of thinking like, oh God, woe is me, why would you do this? We need to remember that nothing is wasted. God does not waste a single opportunity on us. And in this season of Moses's life, God was using his supernatural powers to prepare Moses to be the one to deliver God's people from Egypt. We already know that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Sometimes in order for God to accomplish his purposes through you, he's got to take you lower before he takes you higher. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm really talking to myself right now because I'm like, noted. Now, years go by. The enslavement and the oppression of the Israelites is so bad that they begin to groan and they begin to cry out to God. Their bitter bondage, their oppression forced them to cry out to God. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when things are like really, really great for me, I'm not crying out to God like how I should be. I should always be crying out to God regardless of whether my situation is great or whether I'm really struggling. But sometimes this is exactly what needs to happen for you to call on God's name. And now you already know me. I've asked this question a million times, like why is God allowing me to go through this? Why God, why me, why me, why me, right? It sounds crazy to me now, but at the same time, this, what if that is exactly 
why God is allowing you to go through it. Because he wants you to trust him. He wants you to call out to him. He wants you to include him in your situation because it forces us to turn our gaze and our focus on him and take God seriously. Like, I feel so exposed. God hears the groans and the cries of his people and he remembers his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It says that the God of heaven and earth listened to his people's cries. Not me getting the hiccups right now, my gosh. A couple of things that I wanna point out about God's character is that God is a God of process, okay? We see Moses being born and we see the process of him growing up and how God has been orchestrating these things behind the scenes Moses' entire life. So it didn't happen right away. Just as in our lives, God has been orchestrating and allowing our lives to play out while still doing his work behind the scenes, regardless of whether or not we recognize it or not. Because I'm pretty sure Moses never thought when he was younger that he was going to be a prophet of God, that he was going to deliver the people of Israel from Egypt. But God always intended that for him. So just look at your own life. There are things that you might not even be privy to right now because it's not in God's timing for you to know, but God has been orchestrating a work in your life behind the scenes. And when the time is right, you'll know. I'm really talking to myself here. I'll know. So in verse 24, it says, so God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so a couple of things that I wanted to just notice is that God hears you. God hears you even when you feel like prayers are falling on deaf ears even when the things you've heard God say contradict with the things that you see in the natural God still hears you he's listening and I'm so grateful but also seeing how precious the sacrifice of Jesus was because I catch God's ear every time I call on his name whereas people did not have that before and so God hears and God remembers. God has not forgotten. And I'm real quick to say, God, you have left me here and you, there's no movement. Like I've been feeling very stagnant. I've been feeling like my situation has just been, you know, here it's not changed. And I'm like not getting fed up, but at the same time, I'm like, God, please, I need something. Give me something here. And I have to remember that God remembers. He's not forgotten about me and he's not forgotten about you. So if you're feeling that kind of way in his word, this is this is another reason why. People always say, God hears you, God remembers. And I'm like, well, where in the word does it say that, right? So now I'm going in and looking for myself and literally finding it because if I can see it for myself, now it's gonna stick. It's not just word of mouth anymore. It's literally in the text. So if you need to see it for yourself, Exodus 2, 24 and 25, read it. It says it right there. In verse 25, it says, God saw the sons of Israel and God took notice of them and was concerned about them, knowing all, understanding and remembering all. God is concerned about you. God is concerned about me. God is concerned about the things that are bothering us. He's concerned about every detail in our life. And even when it doesn't feel like he's concerned, he's concerned. We have to stop equating who God is, God's character to what we feel because feelings are fleeting. They come and go, your, your feelings change every single day. This was just really so good to me because now that I'm able to identify myself, I'm able to see myself within the text. I'm able to see God for who he is in the text and seeing why he's allowing the things that are going on. If I can see why he's allowing it in the word, I can now understand and receive better why he allows me to go through the things that I go through, that I experience, but mainly just the learning about who God is, learning about his character. Because if I can see the character, I can understand it, I can look for it in my life and be like, oh, well, I guess that perfectly makes sense. Now, some things I just don't understand, and it's not for me to understand. I don't need to understand all. I just need to have faith that when my God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. That God is not a man, that he should lie. That if God has called me to something, he will bring me through it, which is a perfect example of what we're gonna see here in the book of Exodus. I almost said the book of Moses, oh my gosh. In the book of Exodus, because we'll find later that like Moses has a stutter and he's like, I, I can't even speak God, why would you use me? Like all this other stuff and like God is like I have qualified you you are equipped to handle this this is definitely a lot this is a great read and I've spent a lot of time talking and I'm probably gonna be late to work now but I just wanted to like just have this little faith talk with you guys because I I work through the word and I'm learning as I go and I'm just trying to share as I go because I don't always get things right but I really am trying to learn. I really am trying to learn who God is and share how I'm learning who God is because maybe somebody else is going through it. I don't know, but I just wanted to share this with you guys. Okay, I have to get ready for work right now. I'm not gonna, you know, do an in-depth tutorial. I'm just gonna do a little time lapse. So if you wanna get ready for work with me, stay tuned because that's what we're doing.
to bring it down so you because <laughs> you know you're not tall enough and stuff. That's because I put him in the wrong Hold up, hold up. And you just, man, you like yeah, I don't want the video to get demonetized. Thank you. Thank you for caring about my demonetization. Why was you running out there in the hallway? <laughs> I wanted to say hi because video. she doesn't want to do work. So anything but the work. No. Actually, this is what happened. My computer was in Spanish. Devin tried to fix it. Then when he got it fixed, Earth decided to take my computer. She didn't do nothing about him taking my computer. So when he decided to give me my computer bag, it took me a long time to log back in on my account. Because she let him take my computer and go sit down and she didn't do nothing to him about taking my computer. That's what happened. So wait, hold on. I gotta say something. So is that a her problem that your computer got took or is that a you problem? That's a her problem. Hello? That's a her Thank you, O. No, that's a her Thank problem. Because what did I tell you to do? I told when Eric took your computer, I said, go over there and get your computer. You like, looking at? I don't want to do no work. Who you looking at? Your thief. Oh. Your thief. Anyways, like I was saying, no, she didn't go get my computer. On a side note, she okay, forget her. the conversation. You are just glowing. The skin is going. It's giving Korean skincare. Is giving moisturization. Stop, come back. I want the people to see. It is. He may try to be smart. No, he may try to be smart. He may try to be smart and say something. Yeah, the skin is just. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. It looks so great. Hold up. Are you mad, big boy? Are you mad that your skin is not going to be open? So, y'all, I missed y'all. She hasn't been putting me in the room. I don't know why. You were in. I already passed the learn lesson and she didn't tell me. She did not pass the learn lesson. She did the warm up, which was dealing with fractions. She didn't even get to the lesson. I'm, look, I'm looking at the lesson right here. Are you trying to recruit somebody to do your work? Oh, pray for my baby. So, Danae said that she has beef with me because she didn't get a chance to show you her outfit. So, let's no longer have beef and let me show you her outfit. Are you ready? Fix your face. Fix your stance. Is that what you're gonna show them? Okay. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to show you my shirt because it's so pretty and stuff. And she didn't want y'all to see my shirt because I don't know why she didn't want y'all to see my shirt. I didn't even hold on. Look who's back. She's back from her. Yeah, you're on back from here. Oh, lovely. See my twin, Miss Daughtry. Hi. Y'all with the same exact skin color. Y'all see it like. Okay, so we, where did we leave off? Oh, we left off with Danae, such a little peach. Um, so after school today, we had um, a G squared meeting, which was the group that I was telling you guys about that myself, Miss Curry and Miss Cobbs, we put together. It's called God's Girls and we call it G squared. And so today we just had a brief meeting for like 20 minutes and our students, they're going to be reading Jonah. So next week we're going to start a Bible study on Jonah, which is like so exciting and I'm really excited, but I wanted to get them acclimated with the Bible app and we're going to work on getting them physical Bibles. But right now the app will work perfectly because they all have phones, which is great. We had that meeting and I'm just like so excited to see see this group grow like oh my god and we have so many girls and they're so excited like I've never seen girls I've never seen young people just like so excited to learn about God and just like what it means to be a godly woman and I just love that we were we had the ability to do this because not a lot of public schools are able to do this and it's an after school club it's a program we had to get the kids parents to sign up for it um, or sign off on them being there um, so they're fully aware of like what's going to be happening what the kids will be exposed to and if they have questions or anything they can contact us which is pretty cool. So I had that meeting and then I was just on the phone with Jay. But now I am about to go into Target because I had to pick up a few things um, for my trip because my flight leaves tomorrow night and I just need to make sure that like everything is together. And I mean just a few things because I really do not have the funds to be just like out here spending. So we're going in. Y'all, good morning. It's the next day. Yesterday, I just, after I came home, I was editing and then I had to pack for my trip because my flight is tonight. But after Target, I ate my little TV dinner. I really only went in there for the things that I said. I got a deodorant. I got this TSA approved like or compatible little travel bag for my toiletries. I got my TV dinner and some cute little white sneakers. Oh, and some pads. And that was it. When I film in Target, I think I'm more tempted to shop around and the more I see the more I'm like like to get content the more I see the more I'm like oh yes mm -hmm. yeah I need this 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 and this so I decided yesterday to not not do that anyway so I'm getting ready to go to work I packed last night at like literally 11 o'clock at night and I was so tired but you know we ended up 
we ended up getting it together. I feel like I need to buy all new clothes. I have like no clothes because all of my stuff either does not fit anymore or I gave stuff away and I'm just like missing a lot of stuff. Like I'm really on a mission now to start building my wardrobe. My suitcase is all packed, my shoes, my clothes, everything like that. The only thing that's not packed obviously is my toiletries, which I'm doing right now. We're gonna get a move on on it because I have to go to work today. I do have to teach today. Um, my flight's tonight at seven. So I don't think this is how you're supposed to do this, but this is the most effective way for me. And I think that'll be cool too because then I could just spray the toner on my face. This is my broken tripod. So it is very much sliding down on me, hate that. I'm not checking my bag, which is why like I can't use my full size products, which absolutely sucks, but it'll be all right. And if I need more stuff, I know I can just get stuff on there. I always have to mix my little concoction with my favorite like body, body lotion products. So I did like one part of the Vaseline Cocoa Radiance body oil and then some of my Eucerin and then of course followed up with my EOS Vanilla Cashmere. I actually got a better night's sleep last night too which was so good because I have been miserable these last couple of days. I don't feel crampy today which is nice thank god because I really have been suffering these last couple of days. Literally there's like no update. I didn't really do too much yesterday. I was just chilling. And then today I just have to make sure that I'm productive and get like assignments for my students for tomorrow and monday because i won't see them until next tuesday and that's just like basically everything is in here i love my little sempered too because sempered definitely comes through with the size and just like pop it in there everything is good to go so i can put this in my suitcase i need to get dressed for work and i really want a coffee i think i'm gonna stop at dunkin donuts on my way to work to grab a coffee we're just gonna be kicking it for the next couple of hours all right so we are at work in the parking lot but i didn't put my lashes on so we need to put my lashes on i really hope i have stuff in here perfect i thought i took everything in the house last night i'm glad that i didn't because i would have no lashes i'd be looking like rufus okay like you know you gotta peel the glue this is why i miss getting my lashes done because i didn't have to go through all this and i hate the feeling of the glue when it hits my skin i'm so mad i need to find like a lash tech that can do more like natural lashes because before when i was getting them done like her work was impeccable but they were just i feel like they were really heavy and really dark on my face and that's just like not the space that i'm in <laughs> i'm not there anymore ever since i was like talking to you guys about like my studying exodus right i have really been prioritizing like taking my exit gracefully leaving gracefully and this won't make sense right now because god is still working through some things with me but it's not like a physical exit it's a mental emotional exit now that i've made peace with everything i just feel so free like i just it's weird it's weird that your mind can keep you in captivity because it keeps you in the cycle it keeps you in the delulu and let's just be let's just be honest about this right i am a person that i love to live in the delulu i love to be in control because i'm in control everything works out the way i want it to work but the delulu is a dangerous place because god does not reside there because god is the one that is in control and when i live in the delusion it's like me telling god that i i don't like what you're doing so i'm just gonna create my own here where it's just all about me 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 me, and everything that i want i get and it's ideal and it's not hard and it's not stressful and it's not confusing and it's just all this stuff and now i'm at this point where i'm like if god is really showing me something if god is showing me who people are if god is showing me what a situation is believe it believe him because you got to do a lot more work to live in the delulu and turn a blind eye instead of just accepting what is and i don't know like today i just feel so like mentally free it's a newfound freedom and i love it like when you can get out of your own head that's my favorite it's hot in here i also need this glue to dry because i'm about to make myself late i don't know why i wanted to share that with you but that is like a praise report for me i know i don't really get up here and like share them but like my praise report is that like i have found freedom in my mind freedom that has kept me in cycles just different players in the game that's it i can gracefully take my leave and i am and I did, and I have no regrets. I feel like God is doing something, something big, and I don't know what it is, but I'm waiting in expectation. There are like six cars in this in this teacher parking lot right now, so I do not feel bad at all. Like I'm, I'm gonna walk in that building in five minutes. I need another five minutes to prepare myself. All right, my lashes are on. That literally took one minute. Okay, perf. Anyway, I got my coffee today. My coffee order is a medium iced latte with butter pecan, three shots of the unsweetened blueberry and almond milk. It is literally my latest obsession. It gives just very much like dessert, like a blueberry crumble, blueberry cobbler kind of feel. 
Oh, they made it so good today. Oh, they made it so good today. Today's gonna be a good day. Mm -hmm.